Hello and welcome to the Commander's Quarters. I'm your host, Mitch. Glad to have you here. Here at the Commander's Quarters, we're all about Commander on a budget. Today's episode is going to be a $50 deck tech. When I say $50, I mean that is an overall deck cost. Both shipping and commanders that are $10 or less are going to be included in that cost, but basic lands will not be. Decks on this channel are built to be fun, inexpensive, and focused. If you want to learn more about what a focused commander deck is, check out this video here. On this deck tech, I'm going to take you through its strategy, the tactics, and how this deck wins. This show and episodes like this one are possible because of viewers like you. So if you're looking for some easy ways to help support the show, make sure you like this episode and share it with friends. And make sure you subscribe to the channel and hit that bell notification icon so you don't miss any new episodes. You can also go check out our playmats and other merchandise at thecommandersquarters.com. Thank you to everyone who's already purchased our merchandise, it really does help support the channel. Another easy way to support this channel is by using our TCG Player affiliate links. So make sure that you're looking for those links in the description whenever you're buying a deck or just individual cards. And the final way that you can support this show is by supporting us directly by becoming a patron. There are many benefits to being a patron and I truly couldn't do this without all of their support. Today's commander is Emrakul the Promised End. Emrakul is a 13-13 Eldrazi with flying, trample, and protection from instants since she costs 13. She costs one less to cast for each card type among cards in your graveyard. And when you cast her, you gain control of target opponent during that player's next turn. After that turn, that player takes an extra turn. So Emrakul has an incredibly high mana cost at 13 mana. Now you can reduce her cost by getting different card types into your graveyard. And once you can cast her, that payoff is huge. First off, she's an incredible threat and a two-hit kill. And secondly, she's going to let you gain control of one of your opponent's turns. They do get an extra turn after that, but you can easily sabotage them during that first turn. Because this is a colorless commander, we are limited in our card pool. But we've still got plenty of ways to make this deck work and make it really effective. So our strategy with this deck is very straightforward. We want to ramp as quickly as possible and cast huge threats. Emrakul costs a ton, so we want to ramp and then ramp some more. And while we're ramping, we can cast some other powerful Eldrazi to help us out. And then how do we win with this deck? Well, we're going to sabotage our opponents and smash them with everything. When we gain control of an opponent's turn, we can easily mess with their hand and their board. We can kill our opponents with our powerful creatures, or we can just win with commander damage. We even have some ways to turn Emrakul into a one-shot kill. As with all Commander's Quarters decks, I'm going to take you through 10 different tactics that show you how the deck works and how we're going to win with it. So let's start with tactic number one, start small. First up, there's Wayfarer's Bobble, which we can pay 2 to tap and sacrifice to get a base land to play tapped. Up next, we've got some Mana Rocks that cost 2 with Pillar of Origins, Sphere of the Suns, and Guardian Idol. Pillar of Origins can help us cast Eldrazi. Sphere of the Suns enters the battlefield tapped, and we can tap it for 1 mana of any color 3 times. And then Guardian Idol also enters the battlefield tapped, and it can tap for a colorless. And then we've got Fractured Power Stone, Prismatic Lens, and Mind Stone, each of which cost 2 and tap for a colorless. On top of that, we can pay 1 to tap and sacrifice Mind Stone to draw a card. Next up, we're going to be running some less efficient mana rocks, but again, with this deck, we need as much ramp as we can get. Mana Geode and Seer's Lantern each cost 3 and tap for 1. On top of that, when Mana Geode enters Battlefield, we scry 1, and we can pay 2 and tap Seer's Lantern to scry 1. If we're going to pay extra for our mana rocks, we want a little utility with them. So we're also running a Rascal Relic and Magnifying Glass. If we have the City's Blessing, we can tap and sacrifice a Rascal Relic to gain 3 life and draw a card. And then by paying 4 and tapping Magnifying Glass, we can investigate. Finally, we've got three more mana rocks that cost three and tap for one with Victory Chimes, Cultivator's Caravan, and Unstable Obelisk. Victory Chimes is actually going to untap during each of the player's untap step. And Cultivator's Caravan is a 5-5 vehicle that we can crew for three. By paying seven to tap and sacrifice Unstable Obelisk, we can destroy target permanent. Colorless decks don't have a lot of ways of dealing with certain kinds of permanents, so this can come in huge. But as you probably guessed, we're nowhere near done ramping just yet. So now let's move on to tactic number two. Ramping up. First up, we've got Everflowing Chalice, which is one of the most flexible mana rocks out there. By paying 2 into it, it taps for 1, paying 4 into it, taps for 2, and so on and so forth. This card is fantastic in this deck because it scales with however much mana that we have. Some other efficient mana rocks that tap for 2 are Soul Ring, Worn Power Stone, and Hedron Archive. Soul Ring is by far our best mana rock since it costs 1 and taps for 2. And although Worn Power Stone costs 2 more and enters Battlefield tapped, it's still a fantastic card. And then Hedron Archive might cost 4, but we can also pay 2 and tap and sacrifice it to draw 2 cards. And we've got some more mana rocks that cost 4 and tap for 2 with Urgolem's Eye, Sisse's Ring, and Firebind Vessel. Next up, there's 3 mana rocks that tap for 3 with Basalt Monolith, Gilded Lotus, and Dreamstone Hedron. Basalt Monolith only costs us 3, but we also have to pay 3 to untap it. Gilded Lotus costs us 5, but it has no such requirement. And Dreamstone Hedron costs 6, but we can also pay 3 to tap and sacrifice it to draw 3 cards. And we've even got some conditional forms of ramp with Pyramid of the Pantheon and Shrine of Boundless Growth. By paying 2 and tapping the Pyramid, we add 1 mana of any color to our mana pool and we get a brick counter on it. And then once it has 3 of those brick counters, we can tap it for 3 mana of any one color. And then if Shrine of Boundless Growth stays in play for multiple turns, it can really be a great source of temporary ramp. Because at the beginning of our upkeep, we get a charge counter on Shrine of Boundless Growth. And then we can tap and sacrifice it to add colorless to our mana pool for each charge counter on it. And finally, we've got Manifold Key, which isn't technically a mana rock, but it's fantastic 
fantastic in this deck. It only costs one and we can pay one to tap it to untap another target artifact. So because of this, if we have any mana rock in play that can tap for two or more, this essentially becomes a mana rock itself. For example, if we tap Sissé's ring for two, we can use one of that mana to untap Sissé's ring with this. Then we can tap Sissé's ring again to be at a total of three mana. This is even more effective with artifacts that tap for three like Gilded Lotus. And on top of that, we can even pay three and tap it to make target creature unblockable this turn. So it can be a great piece of utility as well. But because our commander costs 13, we're still not done with ramping. So now let's move on to tactic number three, Nerd Alert. First up, there's Walking Atlas, which we can tap to put a land card from our hand onto the battlefield. Next up, we've got two mana dorks that each cost two and tap for one with Mannequin and Heatron Crawler. And an even better version of those for this deck is Milliken. We can tap it to put the top card of our library into our graveyard and we add colors to our mana pool. Again, our commander is going to cost one less for each card type that's in our graveyard. So if we hit a land that's one less, or if we hit something like an artifact creature that's two less, this can generate mana on top of reducing the cost of our commander, which is huge. And finally, we're running two mandorks that can tap for two with Palladium Mirror and Coslex Channeler. Now, all this might seem like overkill when it comes to ramping, but it's quite necessary for our commander and our other threats. So we're going to be moving on to our final tactic that deals with ramping. And that would be tactic number four, massive gains. First up, there's Golden Guardian, which is a 4-4 four -four with Defender that we can pay two and make it fight another creature we control, and when it dies this turn, we return to the battlefield transformed under our control. It transforms into Goldforge Garrison, which we can tap to add two mana of any one color to our mana pool. On top of that, we can pay four and tap it to create a 4-4 four -four colorless golem artifact creature token. We've got plenty of creatures in this deck that are bigger than Golden Guardian, so we can use it to fight those and help us ramp. Another creature that can help us ramp is Burnished Heart. By paying three, we can sacrifice it to get two base lands into play tapped. Next up, there's Inspiring Statuary, which gives our non-artifact spells improvise. So even artifacts that don't technically ramp us now become a source of ramp for Eldrazi, including our commander. Another card that can help us utilize artifacts is Clock of Omens. It says tap two untapped artifacts you control, untap target artifact. So if we've got a mana rock in play that just taps for one, we can use any of our artifacts to essentially tap for half of a mana. If we've got a mana rock that taps for two, essentially all of our other artifacts can tap for a mana. With the right setup, this can really help ramp us and help us utilize all of our artifacts. And then we've got a temporary source of ramp with Skittering Invasion. It costs seven and it gives us five Eldrazi spawn creature tokens that we can sacrifice for a colorless. A temporary five mana ramp source is fantastic in this deck, but a way to ramp even quicker and more permanently is Blink Moth Urn. It says at the beginning of each player's pre-combat main phase, if Blink Moth Urn is untapped, that player adds colorless for each artifact they control. Obviously, we're running a ton of artifacts in this deck, so this can generate an absurd amount of mana. All right, so now that we've tackled all of our ways to ramp, what comes next? Let's find out in tactic number five, be prepared. Okay, so I may have lied just a little bit. Codex Shredder really isn't a source of ramp, but it can help reduce the cost of Emrakul. We can get it down early to start milling ourselves and to start reducing our cost. And we can also use it to recur a key card when we need to. This is a fantastic card in this deck that can put in a ton of work. But an even better card to get down before Emrakul comes into play is our golden pick of the deck. And the golden pick for this deck is Ugin's Nexus. It's a legendary artifact that costs five, and it says if a player would begin an extra turn, that player skips that turn instead. Also, if Ugin's Nexus would be put into a graveyard from the battlefield, instead exile it and take an extra turn after this one. So normally when Emrakul comes into play, we get to steal an opponent's next turn, but they get an extra turn in exchange. When Ugin's Nexus is in play, they get no such deal. We just straight up get to steal their turn and they get nothing back. The more times that we cast Emrakul in a game, the more valuable this gets. And on top of that, if someone tries to destroy this, we get an extra turn in exchange. And we've even got a way to sacrifice it too. Emrakul's ETB is already extremely powerful and this makes it even better. And that's what makes it the Golden Pig. But outside of setting up for our commander, we need to make sure that we can draw some cards to keep our deck going. Let's tackle some ways to do that in tactic number six, digging down. First up, there's Staff of Nin, which says at the beginning of your upkeep, draw a card and we can tap it to deal one damage to any target. Next up, there's Lore Seeker Stone, which we can pay three and tap it to draw three cards, but this ability costs one more to activate for each card in our hand. Even if we do have a few cards in our hand, mana is going to be no issue for this deck. Once we're down to no cards in our hand, something like Gearport Ori comes in huge. It says each player may play an additional land on each of their turns, and at the beginning of each player's upkeep, if that player has no cards in hand, they draw three cards. So this can ramp us on top of drawing us cards. Now, this will help our opponents as well, but in a a colorless deck like this one, we'll take what we can get. Next up, there's Sandstone Oracle, which can draw us a ton of cards at once. When it comes into play, we choose an opponent, and if that player has more cards in their hand than us, we draw cards equal to the difference. And finally, there's Endbringer, which is a fantastic utility card. It's going to untap during each other player's untap step, but it can do three things. We can tap it to deal one damage to target creature or player. We can pay a colorless and tap it, and target creature can attack or block this turn. And we can pay colorless colorless to draw a card. Essentially, being able to pay two mana each turn to draw a card is huge. And while it's a 5 5 Eldrazi, it's nowhere near the biggest threat in this deck. So let's take a look at some more Eldrazi in tactic number seven, World Destroyers. 
First up, we've got some more Eldrazi that can help us ramp with Oblivion Sower and Conduit of Ruin. Oblivion Sower says when you cast it, target opponent exiles the top four cards of their library, then you may put any number of land cards that player owns from exile onto the battlefield under your control. So we can whip with this, but it can also ramp us by up to four lands. And Conduit of Ruin says when you cast Conduit of Ruin, you may search your library for a colorless creature card with converted mana cost seven or greater, reveal it, then shuffle your library and put that card on top of it. On top of that, the first creature spell that we cast each turn costs two less to cast. So with its tutor effect, we've got plenty of great options to choose from, including Breaker of Armies, Desolation Twin, and Metalwork Colossus. Breaker of Armies is a 10-8, and all creatures able to block it have to do so. Desolation Twin is a 10-10, and when we cast it, we get another 10-10. And Metalwork Colossus is a 10-10, and it costs X less, where X is the total converted mana cost of non-creature artifacts we control, and we can sacrifice two artifacts to get it back from our graveyard to our hand. So most of the time with this deck, it's going to be a free, recurrable 10-10 for us to cast. Next up, we've got a somewhat smaller, but still very deadly creature with Bane of Balagat. It's a 7-5 and when it attacks, defending player exiles two permanents they control. The more attacks that we make with this, the more it decimates our opponent. And finally, we've got three creatures that have Annihilator with Hand of Embercool, Ulamog's Crusher, and Artisan of Kozlak. Annihilator means that when that creature attacks, that player sacrifices that many permanents. So Hand of Embercool has Annihilator 1, so the defending player would have to sacrifice 1. And Ulamog's Crusher and Artisan of Kozlak have Annihilator 2. On top of that, when we cast Artisan of Kozlak, we get to reanimate a creature from our graveyard. Now, all these threats are great, but we need some ways to protect them and our commander. So it's time to move on to tactic number 8, Otherworldly Aid. First up we've got Swiftfoot Boots, which gives one of our creatures Hexproof and Haste. This can be especially deadly with our commander, letting her swing for 13 right away. And then there's Soul of New Phyrexia, which can easily protect our entire board with this stack. It's a 6-6 with Trample, and we can pay 5 and permanents we control gain indestructible until end of turn. We can also pay 5 and exile from our graveyard to do the same. With the amount of mana that we can generate with this deck, we can easily hold up 5 mana for this effect. And being able to protect our entire team for just 5 mana is huge. But outside of protecting our things, we need to make sure that we can deal with our opponent's things too. So let's move on to tactic number 9, Erased. First up, there's Warping Whale, which is one of the very few instant colorless spells. It says, choose one, exile target creature with power toughness, one or less. Counter target sorcery spell, or put a 1-1 colorless Eldrazi Scion creature token onto the battlefield. So this can deal with something small, counter a problematic sorcery spell, or temporarily ramp us. Next up, there's Meteor Golem, which when it comes into play, it's going to destroy target non-land permanent and opponent controls. Like I mentioned before, there aren't a ton of ways to get rid of certain things in colorless decks. But one of the best ones is Scour from Existence. It's an instant that says, exile target permanent. Now it does cost 7, but that's well worth it for this deck, and we've got no problem Problem making that much mana. Now, dealing with problematic permanents can be a great way for us to get our big threats through. But what are some ways that we can make them, and especially our commander, into even bigger threats? Let's find out in our final tactic, tactic number 10, the promised end. First up, there's Inquisitor's Flail, which says, if equipped creature would deal combat damage, it deals double that damage instead. And then if another creature would deal combat damage to equipped creature, it deals double that damage to equipped creature instead. So essentially, this doubles up the amount of damage that our creature puts out, but they take twice as much damage. Now, we're not going to be too worried about that second part, especially with our commander. Usually, our commander can just fly overhead on at least one opponent. If the flail is attached, that's going to be a one-shot kill for a total of 26 damage. A similar way to do this without the downside is with Fire Shrieker. This just straight up gives the equipped creature double strike, so it's fantastic on any of our big beaters. And the final way to really pump some of our bigger creatures is Hedron Matrix. It gives the equipped creature plus X plus X for X is its converted mana cost. We've got a ton of high cost at Eldrazi in this deck, including our commander. But now that we've gone through the spells in this deck, let's go on to the mana base. Now because this is a colorless deck, there are really too many unique lands to go through. There are a lot of great options for colorless decks, so feel free to pick and choose the right ones that work for you. But for the ones that I chose, I'm just going to tackle them alphabetically. So for this deck, we've got Cave of Temptation, Cradle of the Accursed, Cryptic Caves, Crystal Vein, Dread Statuary, Drown Your Temple, and Emergent Zone. And then there's Evolving Wilds, Founder of the Councils, Guy Reach Sanitarium, Haunted Fengraph, Majoring Network, Mirrored Landscape, and Nefalia Academy. Up next, there's Painted Bluffs, Phyrexia's Core, Radiant Fountain, Rogue's Passage, Sanctum of Ugin, and Seagate Wreckage. And then we're running Sequestered Snash, Shimmering Grotto, Shrine of the Forsaken, Spawning Bed, Sunscorch Desert, and Survivor's Encampment. Next up, there's Terramorphic Expanse, Tomb of the Spirit Dragon, Unknown Shores, Warped Landscape, Zulfirin Void, and Zoetic Cavern. And finally, let's round out our mana base with four wastes. And now that we've gone through every single card in this deck, let's do a quick price check. A quick reminder that our deck costs are calculated using TCG Player Optimization, optimizing with even heavily played and damaged cards because those cards need a home too. The average Emrakul The Promised End EDH Rec deck comes in at $260.71. Our deck is going to be much more affordable, coming in at just $49.79. Now keep in mind with both those prices that this is a Commander Excluded episode since our Commander's price is over $10. Again, the price of this deck is the price that I got for it on the day that I'm recording. If you want to see a breakdown of this deck's cost, check out the link in the description. Keep in mind that prices can and will fluctuate and change over time. But with these deck costs, I want to be as transparent as I possibly can. Again, Commander's Quarters decks are about to be tuned and focused within their budget, but there are always ways that we can improve on them. So let's go through some reasonable upgrades now to see what some of those ways just might be. First up, let's upgrade this deck by adding in Thran Dynamo and taking out Cultivator's Caravan. And then we'll add an Empowered Auto Generator and take out Magnifying Glass. Next up, we're putting in Ugin the Ineffable and taking out Seer's Lantern. And then let's add in Mystic Forge by taking out Staff of Nin. 
Next up, we'll be adding an Erratic Portal and taking out Warping Whale. And finally, let's put in Mind Slaver by taking out a Roska Relic. And now it's my turn to hear from you. So in the comments below, let me know what you think about this deck and what you think about the commander in general. And make sure that you're following us on social media for more updates and sneak peeks on future episodes. Links to our social media accounts can be found in the description. Also in the description below is a link to the Commander's Quarters Patreon page, and I just want to say a quick thank you to the patrons who have subscribed so far. There are many benefits to being a patron for the Commander's Quarters, including being able to vote on future Commanders for deck techs. There's even a general level tier where you get your own personalized deck tech dedicated to you. I truly couldn't do this without all of your support, so from the bottom of my heart, thank you. If you haven't already, make sure that you like and subscribe to the channel. Here at the Commander's Quarters, we're all about budget commander. So while you're at it, go ahead and check out some of our other types of episodes. And with that, I'm out of here. Thanks again, and have a good one. <laughs>